people don't realize how all plants on Earth, almost all plants on Earth, rely on them. The largest organism in the world is a fungus. It's a mushroom that is uh, over a thousand years old and, and covers hundreds of acres in a forest in Oregon, USA. People call it the humongous fungus. It's really a gigantic organism. It dwarfs a blue whale. We have the largest collection of dried fungi in the world. We haven't counted them all exactly, but we believe there are somewhere around about one and a quarter million specimens. It involves a bit of uh, Sherlock Holmes type of work, trying to um, find the right place for the collections and locate the green boxes and file them away. And you will see it straight away, I'm running out of space. Most of the boxes along here um, contain uh, large specimens. This one here is so large, we can't even fit it in the box. It's only when you have to explain to people outside our little world, why do you do something? I realize how important the fungi is. Hey, no, not really. Oh, look, there's oh, yes. Is that what it looks like? Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, well, uh, well let, let me start by saying, by saying what a fungus isn't. So a fungus isn't a plant, and it isn't an animal. It's, 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 it's a fungus. Most of us are familiar with fungi in the sense of uh, we know about mushrooms, but there is a whole other level that is not seen, that is sort of the business end of the fungi. The mycelium is the body of a fungus. It's the network of filaments in the soil. But if we were to zoom in more closely on these, we would see that parts of that network of filaments that makes up the mycelial body are connected to the roots of trees. These structures that they form together with the roots of the plants are called mycorrhizas. These connections are really like finger-like projections or hands coming out of the body of the fungi. The roots of the trees and the, and the fungus really integrate. They help the tree to uptake nutrients and they also increase the surface of water absorption from the plant. Fungi also recycle the dead plant tissues um, in, into the soil, um, which allows them then to be taken up by new plants. Without the fungi, you wouldn't get any new plants. And then without the plants, you wouldn't get any fungi. I find them beautiful. It's amazing how, if you think of life, you know, that we all share the same molecule, how it can just develop so many different shapes and forms. It's incredible. The conservation of fungi is quite a new subject. Tropical fungi are enormously diverse. With habitat loss, we're losing unknown numbers of fungi. And the fungi are thought to outnumber plants by six to one. And so for every plant that's lost in the tropics, we could potentially be losing six species of fungi. It's an amazing number. If you don't know how many species you have, you cannot try to conserve them and to keep them safe. What people don't see is the behind the scenes, the real, the real guts of the institution that is Kew. And we're one of the only institutions in the world to have a team of mycologists, people who study fungi. You can probably count with your hands uh, places where you can find the people and the knowledge and the, and the, the resources to further that kind of research. We have a sort of great big black box underground containing all sorts of treasures that we are just starting to understand. If we think in the, the oxygen that we're breathing is thanks to the plants that are out there, and you know that the plants out there rely on the fungi to be able to absorb the nutrients, you know, you realize, you know, how, how valuable that is.
now that we are losing quality of air, quality of water, of surface of forest, I think it's very important to know what we have below ground. It couldn't be a war without Fanya.